What do you mean by frozen shoulder? See this. Another term for frozen shoulder is also known as adhesive capsulitis. Adhesive capsulitis. This capsule is the capsule of the shoulder joint. Now, regarding the definition, this is a disorder which is characterized by progressive pain and stiffness of the shoulder, usually resolving spontaneously after 18 months. After 18 months, even if we do not treat, the frozen shoulder will spontaneously resolve. But we will wait for that long time, isn't it? That's the question. Patient is having pain. Patient cannot move the shoulder. It is very stiff and definitely they will seek the medical management. Now, regarding, regarding the, please mute yourself. Regarding the, Okay, I muted all of you now because there's a lot of disturbance going on there. After some time, I'll unmute you again. So please pay attention. Regarding the mechanism of the frozen shoulder, the first thing is a primary adhesive capsulitis. It is also known as an idiopathic condition. And uh, uh, the common you know, association of this is a diabetes mellitus. But we really do not know what is the explanation for this. It usually resolves spontaneously in around 9 to 18 months. It may remain maximally 18 months, but it may resolve after 9 months as well. So this is an idiopathic variety common in diabetes. And it is known as primary adhesive capsulitis. The another variety is the secondary one. You see this? The secondary adhesive capsulitis is mainly because of prolonged immobilization. Any of the joint in our body, if we do not move that joint for a longer time, then that joint may freeze. Frozen shoulder is one of the examples. Shoulder hand syndrome is a term which is also known as reflex sympathetic dystrophy in that site. We have studied this before. This reflex sympathetic dystrophy may be a complication of fractures or any type of injury, especially of the limbs, okay? Also known as sudex dystrophy. So it, if it occurs around the arm and shoulder area, then also it may lead to adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. It may also occur following myocardial infarction, following stroke and shoulder trauma. Remember, in all these cases, there may be prolonged immobilization of the shoulder. Now, these are the conditions. These are the conditions which are associated with, see this, increase incidence of frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. And these are, the prolonged immobilization is the most significant or common one. We just talked about that. Some others are female gender, more common in female sex, when age is more than 49 years. Diabetes mellitus, it is five times more common than other people. Cervical disc disease, or disease of cervical vertebra. Hyperthyroidism, stroke case, MI case, and trauma and surgery. Most of these are associated with prolonged immobilization, but some other, we really do not know the cause. Okay, but these are the situation which are associated with an increased incidence of frozen shoulder. Now, what are the clinical features of frozen shoulder? This has a gradual onset. It is not a sudden onset or acute onset type of problem, okay? And it may start from weeks to month. There is a diffuse shoulder pain in the affected shoulder. Usually it is unilateral. And after the patient is having this, there is decreased range of motion. The decreased range of motion in the shoulder. The shoulder is a highly mobile joint. We all know that. It has a mobility of flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, internal rotation, external rotation, and circumduction. After frozen shoulder, all these, you know, uh, range of motions would be severely decreased. Active means patient is doing herself or himself. Passive, 
during our examination, we are passively moving the joint. That's the meaning. The pain occurs in that joint and pain is worse at night. So, patient doesn't sleep on that side. Patient always sleep on the opposite side. Means, when they sleep on that side, you know, there will be more pain. So, patient is avoiding that. And there is stiffness of the joint. Stiffness. The joint feels stuck there. Okay. This is called stiffness. Patient cannot move the joint easily. It continues for 6 to 12 months after pain has disappeared. In the beginning, there is pain. When pain disappears, then the stiffness will continue. Regarding the investigation, we can take x-ray. Remember, any abnormal joint, anything, what is happening there, we always take the x-ray. These are the very basic investigation. But x-rays may be normal or they may show demineralization from the disease. Demineralization means there is excessive resorption of calcium and phosphate. So those bones may look a bit lighter. Or in other words, they do not look very dense. Isn't it? That is the meaning of demineralization. Frozen shoulder has got three phases. So please pay attention. You have to understand this. Then only management would be easy for you. Phase one is called freezing phase. Phase two is called frozen phase. And phase three is called thawing phase. Now, freezing phase means acute inflammation is going on there. And this is a very painful phase. I mean, this is the early phase, you understand, like that. Frozen is an advanced type of phase. Everything is already well developed there. And thawing phase is regeneration phase. Okay, it, it is coming back towards the normal. The freezing stage is by far the most painful phase of a frozen shoulder. And at the beginning of this phase, the motion may only be slightly restricted. It is in the beginning though. Later on, okay, it's very painful type of motion. Now see this, shoulder movement become increasingly difficult and painful in freezing phase. And it may last from six weeks to six months. So this is a, a quite a you know, wide range. Phase two of frozen shoulder is called frozen phase. It may last from four months up to six, okay? See this, four months up to six months. And during this phase, the shoulder joint is very stiff. Patient cannot even move it. Pain is not that much, but severe stiffness of the joint. And phase three or thawing phase lasts from six months to two years. In this phase, okay, the capsule of the shoulder joint has become thickened and stiff, okay, but ultimately it gradually loosen. It gradually loosen. That means it, it is recovering now. It is coming back towards the normal. And during this phase, the person has to stress the shoulder capsule. Try to move the joint actively. Try to move the joint actively. And if that person has come to us during our passive movement of the joint, we will try to move the joint. Allow the shoulder capsule to stretch. And after a certain period of time, the person will regain the movement. So these are the three phases. Now, last part, how we manage the case. What is the treatment of adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder? In the freezing phase, we have to do physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is done in all the phases actually, okay? And physiotherapy can be done by active movement and passive movement. This ROM means range of motion, active and passive range of motion or movement. This is a, you know, a painful phase. So NSAID and steroid injections are given there. If severe inflammation is suspected, then corticosteroid injections are also given into the joint. Otherwise, NSAIDs will do the job. In the thawing phase, when there is a recovery, the capsule of the shoulder joint okay, is already loosening. So we help that process by manipulation under anesthesia. Manipulation under anesthesia. You give uh, you know, certain type of anesthesia, like ketamine, that is a good one. 
Another one, you can mix morphine with digibalm. And then early or active type of physiotherapy is done. So this is the management in thawing phase. Another type of management can be done by arthroscopic way. You can divide some of the thickened tissue or you can decompress some of those tissue from the site. So that shoulder joint will be mobile again. So this is all about frozen shoulder. Remember, when you start working in the orthopedic center, a lot of these, these type of cases would come there. Okay, so this is an important concept to have.